This is the Cali Pewter from the 1960s. It's a little metal instrument that does lots of stuff. They made these in English and metric. I have the English one. It's four inches long and it's marked on the top here. It's got ordinary ruler markings on the top, but below that the inches are also divided into tenths. Actually, if you know what you're doing, this thing will measure to an accuracy of one thousandth of an inch. It's got two adjustable strips called verniers. This thing's basically a vernier caliper, which is a precision length measurement device. It has these sliding jaws. But then they added in all this other stuff, which lets it do computations. So it's a caliper and also a computer. Put these words together in the stupidest way possible and you get Caliputer. According to the instructions, this thing does eight different types of measurements and computations. So let's get right to it, eh? Number one, measure outer diameters. This is for measuring the diameter of something like a cylinder. That's the distance across the widest part of the circle. Like how about my Burt's Bees? Hey Bert, if you're watching, maybe you'd like to become my YouTube channel's first corporate sponsor. With my help, your brand of amazing beeswax lip balms may very well reach over 10 viewers per week. Anyway, to measure the diameter here, you slide open the jaws and bite onto it. Then you read the answer by wherever this little zero points. So the diameter of this thing looks like a little bit more than 0.6 to five inches. See the small markings there are fourths of tenths of an inch. Actually I looked up this diameter on Amazon. They say that a tube of Burt's Bees is 0.6 inches in diameter so it sounds about right. Hey did you know Amazon.com? It's a great website on the internet where you can buy stuff including all your favorite Burt's Bees products. I recommend using Amazon.com for all of your Burt's Bees shopping. Number two, measure the inner diameter. The tube here has an outer diameter, which is the distance across from one outside point to the other. But if you look on the end, you could also measure this inner diameter, which is the distance across from one inside point to another. You use these notches in the jaws that the instructions call the nibs. So you stick the nibs inside, you stretch them out until they fill up the diameter, and then you read the measurement just like before, and you add 0.188 inches. That's the width of combined nibs. So here's my measurement. It's just shy of 0.325, and then I add 0.188, and I get 0.513 inches. Number three, measure outer circumference. What if instead of the outer diameter, you want the outer circumference? That's the distance around the circle part. You measure the outer diameter as usual with the jaws. Then you turn it over to the back to get the circumference. So I guess this fabulous high-end beeswax lip balm tube is right about two inches around. Number four, measure the circle area. You can also directly measure the cross-sectional area of the circle. You measure the outer diameter as usual, and then you look on the back through this little read circular areas window. This one looks like a little more than 0.3, I guess, square inches. Number five, measure the depth. This is to measure the depth of some opening. Like, how deep is my love for Bur I mean, how deep is the little dent on the bottom of this Burt's Bees tube? You stick the caliputer on the edge of the opening and then you slide the arm down into it until it hits the bottom. Then you read the answer from the zero mark on the little depth scale. This one looks like 0 0.075 inches. Number six, multiply and divide numbers. These two logarithmic scales on the bottom make it into a slide rule so you can multiply and divide numbers just like on a slide rule. If you want to multiply two numbers, let's say 14 times 23, I slide the top scale over to 1.4, which I'm going to use for 14. And then I look at 23 on the top scale and read that answer on the bottom. It looks like just past 3.2. So the answer of 14 times 23 must be a little bit over 320. Number seven, square a number. Now you can always square a number on a slide rule by just multiplying by itself, 
but actually there's a special scale on the back of the caliputer for squaring a number. Let's say I want to do 1.5 squared, which would be 2.25. You slide to the number you want to square on the slide rule part, on the C scale, and then you turn it around and read the answer in the squaring window on the back. And it looks pretty close to 2.25. Number eight, the square root. For a square root, you just reverse the process, like to do the square root of two. I find a two in the square window back here, and then I turn it back around and read the number on the C scale, and that's the square root. So it looks like the square root of two says about 1.41, which is pretty good. So these are the main features, but I haven't mentioned what I think is the most interesting part, which is the verniers. These aren't by any means unique to the caliputer. Pretty much any decent caliper will have a vernier on it. This is how you get the extreme accuracy in your measurements down to the thousandth of an inch. The vernier scale was invented by a French mathematician, Pierre Vernier, in the early 1600s. In English, it's usually called a vernier, which sounds stupid, but I don't argue. The vernier is a separate scale that you can use to read a measurement that's in between the markings on a ruler. I made a simple one here just to demonstrate. Let's say this big one is like the main scale and the little one is the vernier. The vernier has got marked points just like the main scale, but when you compare it to the original ruler, it's at 0.9 scale. See, the ones don't line up. Now the magic happens when you move the vernier very slowly to the right. And pay attention to when the vernier marks line up with the marks on the main scale. See, when I start, the vernier mark zero is lined up with the zero on the top scale. But as I move to the right, the vernier mark one lines up with something on the top. And as you keep going, each of the other nine vernier marks lines up with the scale on top in order. It's kind of cute, I guess, but you can actually use those alignments to measure how far across the main scale we are in between the markings. So like to measure exactly where this little mark is, first of all, it's 0.7 something. The vernier measures the next digit, so you don't have to guess. You put the vernier scale right on the mark, and we can see the line at 0.05 on the vernier is lined up. So the actual mark is at 0.75. Pretty great. The caliputer has these two verniers here, which you can use for any of the depth or diameter measurements that I talked about. So like when I measured the outer diameter, I said it was a little bit more than 0.625. Now the vernier has 25 markings. Each of them represents 0.001 inches. So if you look closely, I see vernier mark 13 is lined up. So the true measurement is 0.625 plus 13 thousandths, which makes 0.638. Now that's super precise. In my opinion, there's something really awesome about verniers. You need it because people are really bad at judging unmarked distances between two points. But people are actually really good at judging when lines are lined up. Actually, this special skill that humans have for judging alignment is something that's studied by neuroscientists. People who study human visual perception, they call it the vernier acuity. Look that up, fam. We all have like some kind of instinctive impulse, some kind of OCD urge to see things that are lined up. And when they're not lined up, we notice. And Pierre Vernier figured out how to take this weird quirk about human vision and hacked it into a useful tool. That's truly great. And I wonder what other quirky things about people could end up being useful. Like how about this? Sometimes when I'm watching a movie where the character has to hold their breath and go underwater, I feel like I should hold my breath too. Usually they last longer than me. That's gotta be useful for something, right? Mm -hmm.